In this lecture, we're going to talk about vector displacement brushes as well as 3D alphas. We're going to begin by looking at vector displacement brushes. Dis vector displacement brushes use the vector displacement map technology inside of ZBrush to allow us to create a brush that, instead of a standard displacement map, which has grayscale values that either push in or out, a vector displacement map allows us to displace around a compound curve, meaning this shape here, which curves back over itself, this can be displaced. And that is accomplished with a vector displacement map. Now, those can be generated for geometry and export. Vector displacement maps uh, are, displa are a form of displacement map that can be rendered in external applications. However, in this implementation, ZBrush is using that technology to create a special type of brush. So here you see we've got this sort of alien tongue. Now, I'm going to orient it facing the viewer, just like we would any other insert mesh brush. I will go to B for brush, C for chisel, and I'll select the chisel 3D brush. And that gives us a variety of sort of creature parts here. Now I'm going to go to brush, and I am going to go to create. And under create, or just above create, we have from mesh. Now ZBrush is smart enough to look at this mesh and say, well, this has been sculpted out of this 2D plane or this 3D plane. So it will automatically store this as a vector displacement Mac brush. So I go to brush and I click from mesh and you see it will add it into the stack here. There we are. There's our tongue. So let's test this out. Let's go ahead and create a polysphere. I'll just go to the poly star, go to the gizmo gear and let's change this to a polysphere. Now I want to divide this up so it's dense enough that it can actually support the level of detail in this brush. So let's divide until we get to about 6 million polygons. 5.8, that should be good. So we have our tongue selected here in the chisel brush. So let's turn on X symmetry. We'll draw two of these. I'm going to click and drag and you see what happens is it draws that shape out captures all that detail and that compound curvature. Now if this was a standard alpha, it would look something like this. It would just be a grayscale image that didn't contain that compound curvature. It wouldn't be able to displace back on itself. Now for these to work effectively, you need to make sure that you're using it on a tool that has enough subdivision, subdivision levels to support the level of detail that we want. So let's take a look at another way we can create these. Over here, I'm going to go to Teeth. And this is a series of subtools. If I turn on Solo, you'll see I've just got a series of planes here from which I've sculpted a variety of teeth. So I'm going to select that. I will turn off Solo, and I'm going to go to Brush. And here I have Create Multi-Alpha Brush. I will click that, and once again, here we go, there we are. You see we have our teeth added in to our chisel 3D brush. So let's go back to the sphere. Select our chisel 3D brush. Oops. There we go. And let's draw these on. And you see what we're getting is those individual teeth that we created growing out of this surface. So we were able to generate these in a similar way that we did a multi-mesh insert mesh brush where we had various sub-tools and then we were able to automatically turn each one of those into an alpha in the stack. Now this is becoming a very wicked looking creature here. So how do we create these? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and reset all of my brushes by going to the brush menu and click reset all brushes. Now that's going to return my chisel 3D brush back to normal. See, it's got all of its pieces in there. And let's go ahead and take a look at how we create our own vector displacement brushes. To do so, I'm going to open up the light box. In the light box, I'm going to open the project folder. And in projects, you'll find miscellaneous. Double click on that. And you'll find a variety of brush 3D templates here. The two most important ones, I think, are 1024 or my favorite one here, which is template PG. That stands for polygroup. If I double click that, we don't need to save the changes. It's going to open up this. It's a poly mesh plane and it's polygrouped around the border. Now ZBrush knows when you go to brush from mesh, 
if you are storing a, a displacement brush that is from a mesh that's been sculpted from a plane like this, ZBrush is smart enough to say, well, that's going to be a vector displacement brush. There's another method of doing this called 3D alphas, which we're going to talk about shortly. Those are just created from random geometry. For example, I could create an alpha from this piece of geometry here. Because it's not sculpted from a plane, ZBrush is going to store that as a 3D alpha. Whereas anything we sculpt from this will be stored as a vector displacement brush. So if we go to the geometry menu, you can see that we actually have several subdivision levels on this plane already. The reason the perimeter is polygrouped is because when you're working with these brushes, you do not want to disturb the perimeter of this plane. You also do not want to change the topology of this mesh. That means you cannot dynamesh this. All you can do is add subdivision levels and sculpt on the subdivision mesh. Now you could potentially shrink wrap or project this this plane onto another object. But the most important thing is you cannot change the topology of the plane itself. It has to only go up or down subdivision levels. So to begin, let's go ahead and mask out a little area here. Let's invert that mask and I'll take the move brush and let's just start shaping something here. Let's turn off perspective for a moment. Just pull this out. Now, obviously, we're at a pretty low subdivision level here. Let's smooth this back and just get the most basic shape and create maybe a horn here. Let's step up our subdivision levels, smooth this a bit. Let's take advantage of the fact that it's a vector displacement map and get that compound curvature in there. Now, I'm keeping the, the rest of the, the plane masked there because I don't want to impact that perimeter. But because it's polygrouped, I'll be able to actually hide that quite easily. So I'm just using the pinch brush on the tip of the horn. And let's step up to our highest subdivision level here. Let's clear the mask and let's leave frame mode. I'm going to control shift click on the horn and that's just hiding that perimeter ring of faces. It's just going to make life a little bit easier here while we sculpt. I'm going to take the damn standard brush and maybe add some striations going up the length of this horn. Just trying to make things look a little bit interesting. Hold down the Alt key. I like using the Alt key with the damn standard brush because it pinches up and out in a really interesting way. It's fun to combine that with the, uh, the just the regular use of the damn standard brush. Let's scooch these in. Maybe take the Move brush and taper this, bring this out a little bit. And let's go to the damn standard brush again and maybe put some, some striations running the opposite way around the horn this way. Holding down the Alt key just to pinch those up. Not too worried about symmetry here because you'll never see the front and the back at the same time. So I can get away with using the symmetry brush. Just adding more detail. Now obviously we're running out of geometry here at the tip, so we're only at 231,000 faces. So let's add another couple of subdivision levels here. Now I need to make sure that I reveal my hidden faces and clear any masking I have and then We'll control D a couple times and that brings us up to 4 million faces. And just to be careful, I'm going to control shift click on the horn to hide that outer perimeter again because I really don't want to accidentally move that because that will mess up the perimeter of your brush and we don't want that. Let's go ahead and run some more striations along here. This way. Hold down the alt key. Oops, hold down the alt key. Do a little bit of pinching here. Now let's add some little spikes. I'm going to go to the Move brush and I'll go to the Brush menu. I'll go to Curve and turn on Accurate Curve Mode. And this is a lot of fun for pulling out little spiky bits like this. Maybe we'll put some spines along the edges of the horn like that. Zoom down here to the tip. Hold down the Alt key and we'll just pull up some spikes here along the very, very end point. Pull some spikes out along here. And I'm going to come down to the base where it's going to actually meet the skin. Go to the damn standard brush and let's go ahead and create some sense of this, this horn interacting with the skin around it. I'll go to the standard brush with alpha 1. Now remember, I have that outermost polygroup hidden, so the area that I can see right now, it's actually safe for me to sculpt on this. I might even step down a couple subdivision levels just to make it a little bit easier to make some kind of big form, some big undulating kind of wrinkles down here. Do a little bit of smooth down there. 
take the standard brush and then we'll step back up to our highest subdivision level. Now it is possible to use other vector displacement brushes on this piece and incorporate them into my new vector displacement. I'm going to go to B for brush, C for chisel, and I'll grab um, chisel creature. This is a variety of different creature parts. I'm going to grab these little teeth here. And I'm going to use these to create more little spines along the horn here. Let's just drag them out like so. Now if we zoom in, you can see we're actually running out of geometry there. So I'm going to undo those. And we're only at 3 million polygons. So let's reveal everything again by control shift clicking on the background. Make sure that we get that outermost polygroup. Clear any masking and then control D. And that will add another subdivision level here, giving us 16 million faces. Control shift click on that polygroup just to be safe. We want to make sure that the perimeter polygroup is hidden. And now we should be able to get a better result. Much, much better. So we can add these little spikes running along the length of this horn. Maybe we'll put some on the side here. So we're really able to take multiple vector displacement brushes, combine them together and make new pieces. It's sort of the, the definition of kit bashing. There we go. Let's do a couple more right here. So now that we have this horn sculpted, how do we turn this into a vector displacement brush? Well, the first thing, most important, is remember you have the outer perimeter hidden. Control shift click on the background to reveal that polygroup. If you fail to do that, the, the map that's created will not be accurate. It won't have the full displacement. So make sure you do that. Now orient the shape on screen in the manner that you want it to grow out of the surface. Now I'm going to go to B for brush, C for chisel, and let's just select the chisel 3D brush, which has a variety of different 3D objects in here sculpted from planes. I will go to brush and I will press from mesh. And ZBrush is smart enough to see that this was sculpted from a 2D or 3D plane, and therefore it will generate a vector displacement brush from it. Now remember we have 16 million polygons here, so it might take a moment for it to generate that brush, but it will do it. And here we go. You can see that it has generated and added it to the end of this list. So let's pop over here to a poly mesh sphere that I've pre-prepared. It's at 5 million faces. There's nine subdivision levels. So if we turn on our X symmetry and then just click and drag, you see it draws those horns on that surface. And you see all that sculpting that we did around the base comes in handy. It helps transition those shapes down into the, the surface you're growing them from. So anything that you can sculpt from that plane, you can then generate a vector displacement brush from it. And if you want to save this, you can simply save the plane itself that you sculpted from, or save your brush by going to Brush Save As. Now, that is vector displacement. Again, that's only generated when you use one of those 3D planes that I showed you at, at the project folder. ZBrush knows anything that's sculpted from a plane like that will generate a vector displacement brush. You cannot change the topology and you cannot change the perimeter of that mesh or that plane. Make sure you use the polygroup version just for the ease of isolating the border and be sure to show that border again before you generate the map. Otherwise, it'll throw off all the levels. So another thing before we move on, I'd like to show you the um, the strokes here. If we change from the drag rectangle to the spray stroke and then use a vector displacement brush, we can spray those displaced objects on the surface. So it makes these interesting little spines or, sp or spikes. Um, it's really cool with teeth um, or if you're doing maybe an insect that has spines. So let's take a look at this with um, some teeth that I sculpted. Here I have a series of planes from which I've sculpted a variety of different little sharp teeth. So they've got transitional areas sculpted down into the plane itself, and each one is a slightly different shape. So just like our uh, insert multi-mesh tool, if we want to generate a, a new vector displacement brush from these planes all at the same time, go to Brush, Create. There's Create Multi-Alpha Brush. Click that. It's going to actually create a new brush replacing what was in the currently selected brush, so be aware of that. So if you save this as a different brush, you now have a vector displacement brush with a series of different teeth 
that can be inserted as vector displacement maps, or vector displacement brushes, I should say. The brushes do use a vector displacement map to function. So we'll just save this out, like so. Now if we return to our polymesh sphere where we've added the horns, we'll take this toothbrush, let's undo so we have a clean slate to work from, move down here and there we go we can start to spray those teeth on which makes a rather unsettling effect so if we change to a different uh, tooth here spray those on this again it works great for spines or bits of hair it's perfect for anything where you want to get a nice distribution of, of little tendrils or, or spikes on a surface So that's using the spray stroke, and of course you can change your flow and you can change your placement to adjust how they're clustered and how they're placed under the surface. I find that very disturbing. That looks really upsetting. <laughs> so it's a neat trick and a really cool variation on how you can create your own vector displacement brushes from a series of subtools like this rather than just one plane at a time. Not simply selecting a a Z tool that has multiple plane subtools. Go to brush while you have the chisel brush selected and create multi alpha and that that will reset everything in that brush. So if you need to get it back, reset all brushes. So if we go back to the chisel brush now, you'll see that it returns it to its original state. And then if I go to brush, load brush and we load up that brush that we saved. Now we have our tooth chisel brush as a separate brush. So that is vector displacement brushes. Now let's move on and take a look at 3D alphas and creating those for brushes.